In this lesson, we are going to learn how to interpret chemical formulas. Now, what is a chemical formula? A chemical formula is a shorthand method of describing the composition. The word composition is basically what is the chemical formula made of? Well, in this case, the composition of a molecules. Now, it uses symbols of elements, which is coming from the periodic table. Subscript, coefficient, and sometimes parentheses. Let's review. A subscript, if we look at this chemical formula right here, we have the subscript 2 and 3, 2 and 3. Indicate how many atoms or polyatomic ions in the parentheses. And we're going to look at example of each in our example belows. Then we have parentheses which are needed when two or more of the same, that's a key word right here, the same polyatomic ions in the molecules. Lastly, we have the coefficient. Indicate how many of the whole entire molecules. Here, we don't have a coefficient here, right? But we know it must be a number one. Over here, we have a coefficient of three. So that tells you there are three of Na2CO3, the whole entire thing, okay? Three of, so it's three times. Now, let's look at this problem and figure out what is this chemical formula talking about? Well, the task is to interpret chemical formula and count how many atoms of each element are in the molecules. So, let's look at our example. Here we have Na. Well, look at Na. That subscript right there tell you that there are two Na. What about carbon? Well, carbon doesn't have anything there, so we know it must be one. For oxygen, see that right there? The oxygen described by the number three, which give you three oxygen. Isn't that easy? Now let's look at how this number are being changed when we have three of it. This is the coefficient right here. Well, we know that for Na, each one we have two, right? So two times three equal to what? Two times three give you six. And then for carbon, we have one right there because there's nothing there. There's no subscript. So we know it's one times three. So again, this three is coming from here. Give us three carbon. For oxygen, we have three right there. Three times three give us what? Well, three times three give us nine. And that's how the coefficient tell you the multiple of how many of that molecules. Now, let's look at this case where we have parentheses right here. See this right here? That two right after parentheses indicate there are two of this whole thing right here, two times. So what we're going to do is this. Let's look at calcium. For calcium, we have nothing here. So it's outside the parentheses, so we know it's just one. And then for nitrogen, it gets a little bit tricky because in here there's one nitrogen, but that two right there tells you there are two of it. So we have two times one equal to two. Well, there are three oxygen in this polyatomic ions, but there are two of the polyatomic ions. So we have three times two, or in this case, two times three equal to six. And that's how the parentheses has an impact on the number of the atoms. And let's look at this with a combination of the coefficient. Look at calcium. So again, this tells you there are three times of the whole entire thing, three times, because that three right there. So for calcium, if that's three times, we have one here, one times three, give you three. And then for nitrogen, notice how we have one nitrogen here, and there's two of it, so we have one times two, but there are three of them, so we have to multiply by three, give us a total of six. You see how that works? See right here? Two for each one of them, and if we multiply by three, that give us six, which is what we have here. And over here, you already can see the answer for oxygen already. See right there? Six in one of them. What is six times three come from there? Well, in this case, let's look at this. Two times three is what? Two times three, and then time three again. Well, this is where the six coming from. Six times three give you 18. And this, the same thing, give you 18. And that's how coefficient and parentheses plays in terms of how our chemical formula are presented. Let's try another one. Look at this one right here. We have H 
H without hydrogen. They are in two different places. So what's the common sense? We just add them together. We group them together. Another way of writing this is we CH4O. Well, this allows the whole entire thing to look a little bit tricky. So for carbon, we just have one. For hydrogen, we have three here and one there. So what's three plus one? Four. And for oxygen, it just be one. Now let's look at this, how the coefficient will change everything. Again, that tells you there are four times of the whole entire thing. So if that's the case, what is one times four equal to four? And for hydrogen, what is four times four equal to 16? And then for oxygen, what is one times four equal to four? And we can prove that right here. Hydrogen is three plus one, give you four right there, or four right there. And it's four of them, 16 for carbon, just one times four. And that's how you interpret chemical formula.